Professor Black Ops, you see it. Let's get it. Cleveland was hit by a cyber attack. So let's look at a couple of videos and just start breaking it down. All right, now to the second part of this, now to the cyber attack that shut down City Hall. Only on five, the chief communications officer says the city has, quote, no intent of paying the ransom demanded by the hackers. News 5 investigator Sarah Buddison broke the developments. And she's live now in the newsroom with how the city, Sarah, is trying to fight back here. So real quick, let's jump in on it a little bit. I'll give you my two cents on it. You notice the communication team respond. I used to work for, most people know this, a large state government. And when you start talking about a, a state government, if it's a high enough attack, the governor or the senator of the state's gonna respond. So you're gonna have a communication team. So I used to work for the Department of Revenue. If it's big enough, our communication team is gonna talk to the governor's <laughs> communication team. We actually talked about it in a meeting. So if, if your attack is big enough in the state gov, government, one of the uh, big dogs communication teams is going to respond. That's right. Katie and Damon City officials told me they are not negotiating with the cyber attackers and will not respond to their demands. All of this as residents continue to cope with being unable to access services. This is all just like really boring documents. Aiden Priester was fired up to learn Cleveland City Hall has been shut down for nearly two weeks. It's just a whole other thing I gotta deal with and now it's more days of stress. He just started a food truck business, but before he can sell in the city, he needs a vendor's badge from Cleveland City Hall. You need this badge to do anything in Cleveland. So like I said, it's super crucial that we get the badge. But Aiden was out of luck. City Hall was closed today for Juneteenth, and many services have been unavailable since a ransomware attack was discovered the weekend of June 8th. Is this just part of life in America in 2024? Unfortunately, yes. Jeff Brancato is... Let's jump in on that. We're going to talk about that is major city and major state should have incident response plans. So if your service goes down for a particular agency, BMV, DMV, Department of Revenue, uh, child welfare, you should have a plan in place. So if you get hit by a cyber attack, is that paperwork? Is there uh, offlining to a different site? Go to a, a Google site and do some forms from there so you can collect information and flow it through the pipeline to add it to the services later. But you need to have a plan. And it seems like uh, they didn't really have a plan because they didn't have a black plan on how you're going to do services. Because sooner or later, if you're a big city or state, you, you're going to get hit by some cybersecurity ransomware, malware, denial of service attack. There's just so many attacks that can be uh, hit, especially from a state or a city um, uh, agency or division. The executive director of the Northeast Ohio Cyber Consortium, the Regional Business Association helps support IT at local companies, hospitals, and universities. The lesson to take away from this is that we're all vulnerable. Cleveland is sharing few details. We do know the city says it has no intent of paying the ransom. Jeff says Cleveland's strong stance is the right call. You would have to remember that you are dealing with criminals and going into a business relationship with criminals is never a good idea. We also know some systems are safe. A spokesperson says the Department of Taxation, Utilities, and Airports are on a different network and domain, and there is no evidence of an attack on these specific systems. We don't know who's behind the attack. I think that will probably come to light at some point. Um, there are a number of international ransomware gangs that are active. It's definitely really like scary just real quick if you heard some agencies was on a separate network you said have network segmentation where really each big division dmv department of revenue uh department of workforce development all the big 10 or 15 there should be network segmentation between those agencies and divisions so depending on what malware it hits if it hits on your desktops or your flat network your back end should be protected so it'll be interesting to see what that is when it comes out. And I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna do a, a rack, right? Um, just go over the attack and see what happens and see what they were actually missing. And do we do have a site that talks about what happened in Cleveland and just kind of go through how to stop ransomware. 
scary that all my information is about to go into their computers, too. Aiden left City Hall empty-handed today and full of concern about what will happen tomorrow. I've spent all my money on this food truck, and I have three events this week, this weekend and next week in Cleveland. So if this keeps going on and I can't get my badge, I'm going to have to cancel those events. So that's, like, extremely inconvenient. Just real quick, you as a, a personal business, you own your business, you should have contingencies for stuff like that. If if a third party or somebody you're connected to, if one of your vendors get hit by a cyber attack and you can't order something or get something, what is your plan? Right. So um, if he thinks he's in good shape, I would have all my document. I would just do my three events. <laughs> I just go. We used to call it working at risk. And I would just blame it on the city of Cleveland. You, you can't hold up my event because you didn't do due diligence of what you're supposed to do. So if I had a, a clean bill of health and the only thing I was doing was taking that paperwork to show it to the city. But if I had some, um, I think they had to come out and do an inspection, check where your food, I think you got to create your food and actually have a restaurant or a professional kitchen. If I had all that paperwork together, psh, I would just do it. Just ask for forgiveness later. City Hall reopens to the public tomorrow. I reached out to the city to ask if Aiden can get his badge, but have yet to hear back. I also requested an on-camera interview with Mayor Justin Bibb and the head of IT multiple times, but they have declined all of my requests. Live in the newsroom, I'm News 5 investigator Sarah Buddison. We, we used to talk about that all the time. I wouldn't air my dirty laundry. I mean, I wouldn't do an on-site bid unless unless I seen some benefit from it. I, I wouldn't do that either. As a consultant, I would recommend against that. <laughs> right? I would be transparent after it. I would post it. I would walk through it. But doing an on-site interview like that, nah, I wouldn't do that. I, yeah, I wouldn't set myself up for, the, for that headache or that kind of failure. So let's keep going. Come on, Cleveland. We got to do a little better. Let's see what else is going on. For here. a ransomware attack more than a week ago. Since then, residents have been unable to do business inside while IT specialists work to restore their systems. And the city just announced City Hall will be closed to the public again tomorrow. Let's go live now to News 5's Clay Lepard, who's in the newsroom for us. And Clay, you're getting a better idea tonight of what work is being done inside. Damon and Katie, while well, Clevelanders are getting stopped before they can get just about anything done inside Cleveland City Hall, we've learned that doesn't mean the work isn't getting done. Far from it. Some city employees say it's harder than ever to get those basic tasks done, but they're trying to get them done. All right, we are back in session. It's decision day for Joseph Wente. He's trying to open a new tattoo studio on St. Clair, but ran into a zoning issue. His hearing was scheduled for today, but after much of City Hall went down and closed from a ransomware attack last week, his mind started to spiral with the thought of being forced to postpone opening his shop because of it. Loss of more money putting in. Um, I mean, yeah, a lot goes through my head at that point, especially when you're trying to get up and running to build a business. But that's not what happened. No, his hearing went on as scheduled, albeit in person only. Well, Cleveland City Hall remains closed to the- Shout out to them. Obviously, they had a backup. Obviously, looked like they doing uh, most everything on paper. <laughs> but once again, you gotta have an incident response. And at the end, we're gonna talk about that, talk about uh, incident response, talk about supply chain management, talk about uh, access control and what you need to do. But let's keep going. Shout out to them for having a, the paperwork backup plan. Public, some work is getting done. And if you ask Dr. David Margolius, who oversees the city's health department, getting work done has never been harder. Well, almost ever. It feels like March 2020 in that we're scrambling around, creating new workflows, um, working 20 hour days. So that tells you right there, those workflows should auto automatically been defined and known what to do. You shouldn't be doing new workflows. Once again, we're going to talk about that. Your incident response plan, you rank your uh, highest business workflows, what you need to get done. You need to do those workflows and have those automatically documented. Hopefully you can bring up a standalone iPad, have all that data saved in the iPad. And once the systems come up, you can load that data into the system, you know, and process as normal. But obviously they didn't do their incident response plan, their coop plan. Uh, once again, what do you need to do if there's a cyber attack? 
Cleveland's lacking. Uh, you know, but w without the fear of imminent death, of course. The biggest issue for his department, birth certificates. Without reliable internet and in-person services closed, that means going back to pen and paper and forcing people to either request online through the state or sending them to Lakewood or Parma City Halls. And we've been working hard to restore functions, basically one website at a time. A waiting game, forcing departments to step back in time in order to get anything done. And for Dr. David Margolius, he says that should serve as a reminder to others. Beef up your cybersecurity, but also practice for the moment that your internet will go down. See what you can do off the internet because um, this time might come for everybody. As That's weird because I know in Indiana, we practice that. So you would think a city the size of Cleveland, you and I were, have all that already figured out. But once again, they're lacking on that incident response. For Joseph Wente, his wait is over. Yes. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Rocha? Yes. Getting the green light from the city to continue, and now looking at opening his studio, ideally within a week. It meant everything today. Shout out to him. A city spokesperson reiterated that essential city services are still up and running, and it's not clear. And it, uh, we have learned as well that it will be several days at the earliest before it could reopen. After announcing just earlier that the city offices will be closed again tomorrow and are already planned to be closed for Juneteenth. Damon and Katie. All right, Clay Lapar, live force in the newsroom. Thank you very much. I've been a part of those, man. You up all night trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out the system's going to get back up. The other weird thing is a lot of times is. Usually you have that done by a third party vendor outside because those forensic skills are uh, pretty unique. So a lot of times you don't have those full skills on site. So usually you outsource that. So that that's usually what makes it a little tougher also. So let's look at this other site. We're going to read through it real quick. There it is. Is that it? Did I close the wrong one? I got closed the wrong one. It's all right, though. So now we're going to talk about, let's see. They're reopen now. That was a couple weeks old. Oh, let's see what they're talking about on the reopen. Let's see if they give a little insight about what happened. Happening today, Cleveland City Hall reopens once again following that ransomware attack. Yeah, it's been over a week since that attack forced the building to close, but it's back to business as usual almost. 19th Vic Gideon joining us live from City Hall this morning. And what time are they opening today, Vic? Cleveland City Hall opens at noon today after a shutdown for a week and a half since last Monday, June 10th. After to be honest, that's not bad. A week and a half, that, that seems like, you know, they figured out what happened, uh, got it fixed pretty quick, and uh, spun it back up. A week and a half is not bad at all. Shout out to them. After that ransomware attack, it did reopen briefly last Wednesday. However, today is a big step in a return to normalcy. Right now, our call volume is a little higher than normal. City Hall has been closed to the public for a week and a half, and the city of Cleveland released a statement thanking the public for their patience and understanding and wrote, City Hall remains committed to ensuring the security and integrity of our systems and services as we continue to recover from the cyber attacks. The city had earlier maintained the threat had been identified and contained, but continues to be a sensitive and ongoing matter. Here are some tips from the city as City Hall reopens. Please be patient. Things may be slow and expect lines for service. Use online options when possible. Systems that are up and running, however, are safe to use. Building and housing customers. Do not bring in hard copies. The city cannot scan documents at this time. Use the Excella portal to upload documents. Residents who are requesting birth or death certificates are encouraged to submit applications online, but if residents prefer to request a copy in person, Parma and Lakewood City Halls can assist with birth certificates for births that occurred in Ohio. Thank you for holding. An information specialist will assist you shortly. No. The city of Cleveland says it is still investigating that ransomware attack and services like police, fire, EMS, and the municipal courts were not affected at all by this shutdown. We'll continue to keep you updated as other services come back online. Reporting live from Cleveland City Hall, Vic Gideon, 19 News. 
So they named all those first responders, police, hospitals. They need to do a cyber attack because that could be next, right? That's going to go down sooner or later. So you want to make sure you have your um, backup plans, your systems that you're ready to do and, and how you're going to do it. So let's look at a few other things. Let's see, I did a couple, two slides. Let's bring those up. Talk about them. Um, So most people know I do NIST. So these are the security families for NIST. So when you go through, these are the uh, security things you need to be hooking up. You see that right there, that IR, that's incident response. What does that mean? If you have a cyber attack, what do you need to do? The other part in there is you need to practice that annually, right? So you need to figure out a big agencies or a couple agencies and you need to test those out annually, right? If your systems get hit, if you're in the cloud, how do you tear them down, figure out, patch them, then spin them all back up, right? Because there's a lot of automation you're doing now. So you shouldn't be going server by server. So when he said that, I'm, I'm thinking that's not, a, that's not a good take, right? Everything's using automation. So I should be able to click a button and spin up everything for the uh, uh, DMV or BMV. I should be able to spin up 100 servers with a click. I need to be able to spin up a database and load data in there within a couple hours, right? So that's what your incident response is. That's what your incident response plan is. So it seems like Cleveland was lacking a little bit in some of those areas. The cool thing though is they got up in a um, week and a half or two weeks, which for a state is, that's tremendous. A lot of times it takes people months, six weeks, couple months. So obviously they, they, had, they were on top of a few things, but you know, that's why it's a practice. That's why you need to exercise so you can get better. But that right there, incident response, IR plan. And the other part is each one of those systems, you should have a risk assessment, right? It seems like birth certificates and death certificates are pretty big and people need those, right? So what's the risk of that going down? How quick do you need to get it up? Should it be on a different... Um, network like the other ones since it's so important so so it'd be easier to come back up in the supply chain did somebody in the supply chain were you clicking to another vendor to print out checks for the state or did you outsource some of your websites to be monitored by other people from supply chain and risk assessment did you do what you needed to do to make sure those were secure and i'm sure that's going to come out shout out to them for not paying <laughs> right so that that's a What's a good thing, in, uh, and we're going to look at that. President Biden and his uh, security thing in 2023 said, do not pay a uh, ransomware. It's directly, if you nobody pays them, right, they will stop doing it. And the other thing out there that came out a couple years ago is you said state ramp. State ramp is a security that's created for states. Because those are your top 20 or so big agencies have security, like museum, um, uh, DNR, like for hunting licenses, their security is lacking because they don't have a uh, classification of data that's high, right? They might have your driver's license and some other stuff, right? They probably don't have your social security number. So a lot of times they don't have the funding of the other bigger agencies. So state ramp came out to help states with that. So let's read at that at a high level. State ramps creates a framework that can be implemented by procurement and security officials for continuous improvements in cybersecurity for states and local governments, providers and the constituents they serve. There's a big hole in that, especially when you go down to local governments. We talking about city, <laughs> right? And counties and municipalities, they don't have really have any money. So they're really hurting security. So state rem came and said, okay, this should be the baseline for, for those type of organizations. So let's keep reading. Shared service models for state and local governments. Verify once and use many. So if I do something on AWS or Azure or Google and it's state approved, one state ramp gives it its seal of approval. The other states can use it without validating, meaning it's cheaper, meaning it's been uh, validated for security and efficiency for government. So, so you don't have to do your own risk assessment. Uh, they're going to do it and validate and help you validate. Right. A lot of times you keep um, 
we doing the same thing <laughs> from state to state. So you're wasting resources. So that's kind of why they came up with that. Verify wants use many approaches for providers, centralized resources for government and providers, path for procurement to verify controls required. So procurement is when you buy software, usually the state has to put out for RFP, request for a proposal, RFI, request for inquiry. So when you buy stuff, it's already state ramp approved, meaning it has the security for your government or your state already there. Ongoing commitment for to education and best practices, state and local government led uh, for government and collaboration. Once again, some for states. State seems to be lacking a little bit in their security. So trying to give everybody, once again, a once a static baseline for that to happen. And once again, trying to make the state and the United States as whole more secure because if states get hit at the same time, that could be a nationwide attack. Department of Homeland checks that to make sure there's not Russia or China hitting all the states, locking all the states that, you know, could be um, hurting on transportation, uh, knocking down communication. So there's a lot of things we want to make sure there's not a coordinated attack on the United States. So once again, state ramp, I did a video on state ramp. If you want to go check it out once again for states, you're trying to get in GRC. That's the uh, nice compliance to to know. So let's keep rolling. This last one, we're going to look at the uh, the Biden White House. Uh, let's pull it up real quick. At the top, Biden-Harris administration convenes the third global gathering for counter, counter ransomware. It was so big, right? They made <laughs> a, a nationwide thing. So Biden-Harris administration remained committed to taking bold action to combat ransomware. Ransomware is a global scourge of recurring international corporation, I'm sorry, corporation to disrupt the White House Convener International Counter Ransomware Initiative for the third meeting in Washington, D.C. So let's look at when they talk about not to pay. Through the policy pillars, uh, members affirm the importance of adopting strong, aligned message discouraging paying ransomware demands and leading by example. The CRI members endorse statements that relevant institutions under our national government authority should not pay ransomware extortion de demands. This show unity and consistency with the settings and new global norm and standard around ransomware. Right. So that's what they're talking about. If nobody pays, then probably the bad guys will stop doing it. Right. This provides an opportunity to further reshape the cyber environment by creating long term cooperative approaches and common understanding of accountability in cyberspace. Let's look at that other one. Uh, fighting back against bad actors. The CIR members endorsed first ever joint policy declaring members governments should not pay ransomware. The initiative will create a shared blacklist of wallets through the United States Department of Treasury, pledge to share data on illicit wallets used by ransomware actors with all the members. Members is also committed to assist any member with incident response if their government or lifeline sectors are hit with ransomware attack. Right. So there's a lot of nations with not very mature cyber attacks. So, you know, uh, United States, Britain, Israel, all those have top notch cyber um, divisions. So they will help the other members. But once again, the uh, Biden and Harris says you should not pay ransomware. So that's always a discussion. If it's for my shareholders, I might pay ransomware, but <laughs> President Biden said you should not pay ransomware. So once again, something real quick, just wanted to throw that out for uh, Cleveland. They seem to be back up. So that lets you know you need to prepare if you have a business or you need to do something in your state or county. If, if it's down cybersecurity, what's going to be your plan? All right. So if the grid goes down, what's going to be your plan? If your water gets corrupted, what's going to be your plan? So you need to, you know, if you're trying to get passports and you go on a trip, you might want to do that ahead of time. You might not want to wait two or three weeks. Then what you're trying to do, get cyber hit. So once again, just work on your incident response and knock that out. Get a little tighter. Once again, let's go Cleveland. Got to do a better job. Professor Black Ops, please subscribe. Cybersecurity.